stupid, stupid stuff. Well, I don't know about you, but my problems were comp- Oh, all right, you have bigger problems. I don't have that type of problem. I was having tech issues. Oh, tech issues, yeah. The new software that we have, no bueno. I'm going back to the old. Sometimes you have to keep. You don't have to change, right? So give it a big thumbs down. Oh, that's yelp. a big thumbs down, yeah, yeah. You know, we're changing. What are you doing? You can come up here. Uh, just real quick, I just want to give a tip. You know, a lot well, of times well, when they I- they can't see you better. Oh. They can't see me? Oh, oh okay. they're right there. So oh, okay. That's why I'm trying to bring you up here. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Uh, it's like herding cats, people, over there. <laughs> gotcha. The, I, I was over here inspecting the paint on this 1933 Ford. And one thing I sometimes see people do is they're holding this, you know, right up next to the paint, you know. And when I do that on the 33, I just see swirls. As soon as I pull this thing back about a foot and a half, now you can see the telltale wispy lines of holograms. Ooh. So, you know, don't always put that light so close to the paint, pull it back a little bit when you're inspecting. And at an angle to you, not straight down. Exactly. You want to bounce the light up to you. Think of it as a 45, right? Yeah, and even though this thing looks shiny on set, this thing is really scratched up. This is one of our training cars for the class this weekend, and this is going to get a multiple step paint correction. So compounding, polishing, chemically stripping, and ceramic coating. Then I get to drive it. Haha. <laughs> All right. Sorry, y'all. Everything worked fine until you get ready to go, then yeah, that's technology for you. But I am going back to the old software. That's the second time this has happened with that software, so that will no longer be an issue. Gotcha. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. I know we're running just a little bit late, but this is gonna be kind of a shorter one because as you can tell, we're getting ready for Mike's class. Mm -hmm. So, another thing that I'm gonna do is my dog and pony show. If you haven't liked, shared, subscribed, told your friends, mailed your mom, maybe even talked to your grandmother, <laughs> you know, if you can, follow, like, subscribe, ring the bell, that all works for us. It gets us better on the algorithm. That means you guys get to view it and more people get to view it. Share, so, share it in the seance. Share it in the seance. Oh. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go back over here. Mike, what are we talking about today? These are the 3D nanopels. And uh, this is some really cool technology here that what Twinch has done is he's created these concentrates that he's removed the water. But a lot of companies have concentrates out there. That's not where the magic is. 
where the magic is, is the homogenization process he invented. So they remix with water easily, okay? No steering, no crazy shaking. You just add the water, give it a shake, and you've got a perfectly uniform mixture. So that's one of the things that separates the 3D nanopels out from any other concentrate on the market is our proprietary homogenization process. What do you think of that? Proprietary. Took me a couple of tries to say that I was going to say, can you say that three times Not faster? Not proprietary, homogenization. Is right. the, yeah. Say it three times fast. Yeah, so anyway, so the way this works is obviously you look at the size of these containers. They're like 64 ounces, I believe, and they take the place of a five-gallon jug. So if you're a mobile detailer, instead of carrying five five-gallon jugs, and liquids weigh eight pounds per gallon, so do the math. Five gallons times eight is 40, 40 gallons times five. That's 200 pounds of liquids that most guys are carrying around because they're carrying around five gallon jugs of their concentrates. Instead, you could carry around these little nanopels and you have five gallons of ready to use or ready to mix products here. And the other thing that makes this unique is, is you don't have to be a rocket science to mix these products, to get them properly diluted. These pumps that we supply with the nanopels are they meter out three quarters of an ounce. Okay, so not quite a full ounce. And all you gotta do is add one pump to your 32 ounce bottle, and then fill the rest with water, and you've got a properly diluted product at the, at the medium strength. Now, the cool thing about this is if you're a guy that's doing a lot of really dirty cars or the neglected cars, and you want something to be stronger, give it two pumps. But for the average detailer out there, one pump, Add water, you're ready to go. That makes it convenient. Yeah, real convenient. No math, no mixing. <laughs> no math, yeah. Now, the 3D, we have our own 32 ounce bottles. You can use anything you want. One of the things that I don't have here, Yancey, is the OSHA approved labels. We have them, I just don't have any here. Remember, this is a brand new facility. We just haven't got the shipment yet that includes the labels. But yes, for each one of these products, there is an OSHA approved label that you can affix to the bottle so you're compliant with OSHA standards. That works. Yeah. You gotta keep you safe, right? Yeah, gotta keep it safe. Now, now, when it comes to mixing these, I went ahead and took a measuring cup, okay? So if you look over to this side, there's eight ounces. Right. Okay, so there's four eight ounce cups in a 32 ounce bottle. Eight and eight is 16, 16 to 16 is 32. Now you're doing math. Yep, so I went ahead and I measured four cups into here and on our bottles at least, and this is probably for the norm, 32 ounces comes to the very bottom of the ribbed top. So I know a lot of guys fill this all the way to the top, but that'd be like 40 ounces. But right there, that is 32 ounces. So technically, you'd want to have 31 ounces in there and then add your water. But you know, that's really getting complicated. Just fill the, to the ribs. And the reason I like to fill this with water first when I can is that way, if I put the product in there first and add the water, it tends to make some foam. And then, you, you know, you got to half your bottles filled with air bubbles. So if you can, go ahead and add the water first, then add your concentrate and you've got to deal with the foam issue. Same thing when we're mixing car wash in a bucket to wash a car. Every, every company out there tells you to add your car soap to the bucket, then add water. And when you do that, you end up with a bucket full of air. Yeah. What's smarter <laughs> is to there. add two or three gallons of water, then add your soap and then stir it up with your stirring stick. Then if you have your own bottle, measure out 32 ounces and just take a sharpie marker yeah. and, and mark it and then you know where it's at and that's that's what i do for our students just to make it easy i just go ahead and if i put a mark here and then point it out to everybody i mean they go oh okay that's 32 ounces you know it's you know it's, does it take any rocket science to block that into your brain so let me go ahead and just mix one of these up right, here I'll, I'll bring this over here to get it closer to you okay so this is the super citrus all-purpose cleaner so just kind of lodge that up against there pump down Add your spray head and you are uniform mixture of the right concentrate for this product. Boom, done. And you know what's nice about that? Because I mean, everybody just did it. If you're filling up bottles, refill bottles and stuff, you spill the stuff and you're like, oh, that's a couple of cents down yeah. the drain. Now, if you're filling up your bottles, you're only spilling water. Well, and, and these actually are designed to not drip. Yeah, I was okay. going to say, they don't drip. They don't drip. So, so now a lot of guys that have the five gallon jugs, you got a, you got a spigot on there, you open it up, you put a product in your bottle, and then it sits there and drips inside your, your mobile van or your shop if it's on a wire rack or something. So these are actually a real well thought out uh, pump head on here. 
We think of it all here at 3D. Yeah. And you know, right now, what's, what's been going up? The price of everything. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, what but, hasn't been going up? Uh, but gas has been going up, okay? So now, instead of, if you, again, if you're a mobile guy, instead of having, say, five, five gallon containers in your truck to keep all the inventory you need with you, and paying all that extra gas to drive that around, again, you can reduce the size down to these small nanopels, pay less for gas. Yeah, and what, it's eight pounds per gallon? Uh, so, what, well, yeah, so that'd be like 40 per gallon, gallon. Exactly. I mean 40 pounds? Yeah, for each one. For each one, yeah. so yeah. yeah. 200 pounds, if you, have, if you have five duplicates of these, that's 200 pounds of liquid weight. All right. So these are just a well thought out system. And one of the things, you know, Yancy, what we wanted to do last week when we were talking about Beat It Up is we wanted to share this because these are like a, the hidden gem in the detailing industry. Especially so for mobile detailing. You've got everything. You got your super degreaser, okay? Over here, we got the pre soak, okay? Lift back back, ones up, so back here, we got the super wheel cleaner, super glass cleaner, and we got the super citrus APC. So, pretty much anything you need to do with cleaning. They're available in a nanopel size and, of course, 3D quality and the homogenization uh, technique that they've developed for this to make these things, I mean, remix with water. That's a uniform mixture if I've ever seen one. I gave it like one shake. And to just add on to that, I know that we don't have them here in Stewart, but I know that we do sell them is the nano drums where it's a five gallon oh, yeah. drum that yeah. makes 55 gallons. That's more for your shop setup and everything like that. But they have the same thing and we also have a little dispenser that you just hook up into the nano drum and it yep. fills it all up yeah for uh high volume car washes exactly. or detail shops yeah exactly but it's, it's in the, then when you're paying to have it shipped to you you're not paying for all that water weight exactly you're getting pure concentrate see save so. money all the way around people so. all right so why are these cars here? Now that we talked about that, I will get to your questions here in a moment. I'm just kind of walking around with the camera. Well, um, um, but you want to talk about kind of what we got going on this weekend? Sure. I had to get a printout because sometimes I can't even remember all the cars I have here. But here are all the cars here for my big three-day class. I do this class three times a year and boats. Okay, so, uh, so I don't got to try to remember it. Um, we have a, a 2020 C8 Corvette over here. Now, this Corvette is in good shape, but the reason it's here is because I teach, I teach a lot of different things on Friday. But one of the things is one-step paint correction. So if you're new to detailing and you don't, you don't know what that is, one step paint correction is after you've done the normal steps of washing and claying if needed, you know, you do the baggy test, then before you put the coating on, you do at least one machine polishing step to remove any light swirls or scratches, but also to remove anything that's been applied to the car previously. Uh, uh, spray detailers, car waxes, synthetic sealants, a lot of car washes have a built-in polymer, and you really, before you put a coating on, you need to get down to just clean, pure paint. So. I always teach guys, if I'm going to put a coating on, I'm not going to just wash and clay the car and put the coating on. I know there's guys out there that do that and they make good money, God bless them, but I'm going to do at least one machine polishing stuff. And, and in that case, you don't want a car that's in really bad shape like this one. You want something that's in really good shape that doesn't have a lot of swirls and scratches. So that's why this car is here to teach the process of one step paint correction. Now the 33 yeah, over here. Yeah, let's show them. All right. I don't know if you can catch it with it, the camera. It looks good. Yeah, let's walk back here. Uh, this thing has been buffed with a wool pad on a rotary buffer. Now, right, where are you going? I'm going to go right here. Oh yeah, I and, can see. And, but if I move this back and forth, so you'll see the yeah, wispy let me, lines. Actually, let me see. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Come down lower there and then go back go. and forth. Yeah. There you go. See the wispy lines? That's the telltale signs of holograms. And as you walk around the car and you look at it, you know, there's just, there's wool pad scratches everywhere. Cause see what they look like. I don't know if you can see these across here, but they're an arc. They're oh, an yeah. arc scratch. And that's from either the fibers of the wool pad. Here's some really nasty stuff right in here. See that? Let me get your focus. There we go. And, and the, but the whole car is like this, okay? So yeah, the average person stand back and says, oh, what a beautiful car. Yeah, but you this know, is a beautiful car. When you have a detailer's eye and a swirl finder light, you can look at these and go, this thing needs major paint correction. Let's so that's, what's wrong with the Corvette? Well, the Corvette is, there's nothing, this, the, 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 the worst things about this Corvette are the scratches back here. You know, you can see a few scratches back here. Light but him. again, light them up. when I teach one step paint correction, I'm not bringing in cars that are really bad because that's two steps. Yeah, no. 
Got a few. So anyway, so this car is here for one step paint correction. This here is for multiple step paint correction. And then to go with these cars, I think I've got seven more cars. So let me just rattle them off. They're over there in the warehouse right now. We got a 2001 BMW M3 convertible with the cloth top. Okay, so I teach the proper way to clean and protect cloth tops. There's a right way and a wrong way to do it. I've got a 1967 uh, Ford Fairlane uh, convertible. It has a vinyl top, so I also cover vinyl tops. The Fairlane is here because it has a custom paint job and when someone, after they painted it, they machine sanded it with a DA. That's a normal thing in a body shop. They probably hand blocked it first, then they come back and refine their sanding marks with the DA. The problem is when they went to buff it out, they didn't get all their sanding marks out. So there's DA scratches throughout this entire finish. So that car is here for multiple step paint correction. We'll knock it out when we do the 33. So that'll be the first two cars on Friday. After that, We'll have the Corvette back in, and then I've got a 2003 Corvette that's in pretty good shape. It'll take one machine step polishing to get it perfect, and then we'll coat it. So the first two cars of the day are multiple step, the next two cars are one step, and then the next two cars at the end of the day, I cover production detailing. That's what I always call it when you use a, a quality AIO, an all-in-one, or like they said in the old days, Yancey, a cleaner wax. Okay? Old days? The old days. So. <laughs> Um, but, but so by the time the class is over on Friday, they'll have learned three techniques on just the paint side, uh, six different cars. So there's no chairs, no sitting, it's all hands on. Of course, we start the day out washing cars and in the car wash process, we cover things like, um, the convertible top cleaning, uh, how to use an iron remover, how to mechanically decontaminate the paint in the wash process, machine scrubbing tires to really get them clean. Um, engine detailing, sometimes um, uh, headlight correction, uh, just depends on the weather. Uh, I like to show how to sand down headlights before I wash the car, because I always teach to do the things that make the car messy first, then wash the car. If you wash the car and do things that make the car messy, like your machine sanding headlights and throwing splatter on it, now you gotta clean the car a second time, so you're wasting time by doing too many steps. But that's, that's kind of summarizes Friday. Saturday, we jump into machine dry sanding. Now, uh, I'm gonna walk over here for a second. Unless okay. you wanna walk over for me. I, what do you need? I want one of the sanders and the sanding okay. discs and interface pad. Okay. So, one of the cool things about 3D is they're actually a body shop supplier. A lot of people don't know this. They think they're a detail supplier. Of course, we do both. But our roots are in making products for body shops, compounds, polishes, and a sanding system. Now, my entire life, I've always wet sanded by hand, wet sanded by machine. And I've always heard about people talking about dry sanding, but I've never seen a well thought out system, okay? So one company has a disc, a sanding disc, one company has a polisher, but I've never seen a system where everything was manufactured by the same company. The sanding, the interface pads are in that cabinet right to your right. Yep. And the sanding discs, I think, are down below over there. Okay, you got it all. Okay, so. I will show this. So on Saturday we go into sanding and because 3D has a dry move sanding your, move your disc for me. system, I teach the system. And um, as a guy that's always done the messy work of machine sanding wet, I'll tell you this is a lot cleaner. You don't have your slurry running down the cracks and crevices and emblems and all the different places on a car. Of course with dry sanding you do have dust, so you know there's no perfect answer. You either have dust or you got wet slurry. But here is, let me just show you real quickly. So the 3D sanding system that the students are gonna learn tomorrow is this is a five millimeter random orbital sander. And uh, it's uh, brushless actually, it's very quiet. And something that a lot of guys, if you've never done sanding might not know, anytime, most sanding is done with a pneumatic sander. So everybody in the tool industry makes a pneumatic sander. You hook it up to an air hose. Now the problem with that is the air hose has compressed there so it's stiff. So imagine a stiff cord coming off here, you go to sand and you either gotta put that over your shoulder, that kicks the sander up, so you purposely gotta make sure you hold it down, or if you let it down on the ground, now it's pulling the sander down. So you're always fighting to keep the sanding disc flat to the surface. Because this is electric, it has a limp cord, it completely takes the compressed air cord out of the equation. It makes it easier to learn how to use and easier to use. And because it's electric, it's also very quiet, unlike pneumatic tools. Oh, come on, you don't like the air compressor going off every 20 minutes? <laughs> okay, but here's the real secret to the sanding system. It's in the interface pad. 
Okay, so this has microscopic hooks. So they're tiny. And, here's, and then the sanding disc is thin like a piece of paper. Yeah, that is thin. It's very thin. And so here's, here's where the magic happens. When you put the sanding disc on there, because there's no lateral movement between the sanding disc paper and the, and the interface pad, it keeps all the sanding action on the high parts of the orange peel or surface texture. And the benefit to that is, is you're gonna leave more paint on the car. If it's only sanding down the high parts until it gets level, then it's your job to know when you're there and to stop. You leave more paint on the car. And of course, then the sanding discs are offered in 1500 and 2500, and the 2500 buffs out quick, fast, and, and easy. easy. So now you're not heating the paint up trying to fight your sanding marks out. So again, it's a very well thought out system. Now, if Mike likes things that are easy. Yeah, and, and the car I brought in for that is actually a 1955 Chevy panel truck. So it's a street rod that just came out of the paint booth. And, you know, the, the thing that I, is in the industry, there's a lot of confusion over sanding. Why would you sand and all that stuff? But the thing about sanding, I always like to teach real world sanding. So in the real world, cars that actually get sanded are cars like this 33 that got a Custom, like the air quotes, custom paint job, okay? So the painter puts on more paint because he knows it's gonna be sanded because sanding takes off paint, compounding takes off paint, and polishing takes off a little paint. And if you try to sand down something like the C8 Corvette back there because the factory finish is clear, the clear layer is thinner than a post-it note, no matter how good you are, chances are you're gonna go through the clear at some point, now you gotta buy a paint job. So sanding isn't really done to factory finishes, it's done on custom cars. So that's what I bring into my classroom. Real cars with real custom paint, so it's the real deal. Now, I have hoods, okay, and I used to teach classes with demo hoods. So you have a hood on a stand. But usually in those classes, you know, you're just gonna sand a section in the middle of the hood and then buff it out. And are you learning something? Yeah, but whenever you sand a car, down in the real world situation, you got to sand up to the edge, raise body lines, you've got components sticking out of the you know, door handles, antennas, windows. I mean, it becomes very real what it means to sand down a car, not a little spot on a flat panel on a fender stand. So what I want to do with my sanding classes is I not only want to teach the head knowledge and the skills to sand down a car, but I kind of want to scare the bejeebas out of everybody because you shouldn't be getting into this lightly. It's, it's a lot of work. There's a little bit of risk involved, and it's going to take a lot of time and some money just in your materials alone to do the job. So it's a real world sanding class. And Saturday also, we do glass polishing. So for this class, I have a 1973 MGB GT, Little British sports car, and it has wiper marks from the wipers dragging probably sand and dirt across the glass. And we're launching a brand new glass polish and it, it'll come with a rayon glass polishing pad and interface pad. But glass polishing is very different than paint polishing because glass is very hard in and of itself. So what I like to do in the class is show everybody the process, let them all uh, experience it. And then when they leave, they'll know exactly what it'll take. If someone says, hey, can you get these scratches out of my glass? They can either say yes or no and then take the job on. And that summarizes Saturday, then Sunday's boat detailing. And, and then we know, do boats. You know, one of the things I do with boats is uh, here in Florida, we're the, you know, there are so many boats here. I can get a white or light colored boat down here with a drop of my hat. To get a dark colored gel coat boat that's turned white with oxidation, that's really big, you know, it takes a little more work, but I do it. I, I do the work. I invest the time to meeting the people that got these kinds of boats and convince them to trust me and strangers to sand down their boat and put a ceramic coating on it. And then I get them here. So, so anybody taking this class has a great experience. You know, you're going to learn all the steps from sanding to final wipe of the ceramic coating, but you're also going to work on a large size boat. So you're not all hunched over, bent over like on a tiny boat. I mean, everything you can do from a standing position. So it's easier on you because boat detailing, to be honest, quite hard. You know, when anytime you're, if you think about it, a boat isn't straight up and down a boat has a v-shape to it so if you're standing to the side of a boat and you're buffing you're not buffing like this you're buffing like this it's going away from you it'll tax all these muscles your deltoids and everything your your legs your back i mean it's a very strenuous thing to buff out a boat and all you guys that buff out boats know this but the class i teach you know it's again it's the real deal you're going to work on really boats in really bad shape i'm going to cover every single step so 
The benefit to that is, is if someone wants you to detail their boat or your own boat, and it's not in too bad a shape, you'll know that you don't have to do the sanding step. You know, you'll know you could just start it right, right in at the compounding step. But if someone comes along with a boat that's in really bad shape, well then yeah, you know exactly what it's gonna take to do that boat. And if it's your own, you'll know what you're gonna spend in your supplies. And if it's a customer, you'll know what you're gonna have to build into the cost of the price of the detail. Boom. Makes sense. And that's my three-day class. It's a lot of work, and I get all these cars down here. I got the trust of all these people. Um, I have special guests, for, like for this weekend, we have Flex uh, Rep, uh, Chris Metcalf, and we have the Dr. Color Chip Rep, uh, Tony Pando. And we're gonna cover uh, uh, rock chip repair with the, uh, the commercial system from Dr. Color Chip. All right, let me... Uh so there you go. So nanopels, classes, and uh, a little bit of everything. We're going to wax stock and we're in four weeks. That we are. And we're teaching a class over there with Kelly Harris, so that'll be a lot of fun. Yes, it will be a lot of fun. It's always fun over there. All right, so let's come back to this one, and I'm going to bring myself up in here like that. Okay, sorry all, like I said at the beginning, what do you call it, uh, one stream? Yeah, I'm putting you on blast. You guys kind of, you had one stream to nowhere there for a while. Uh, so that will be fixed next week. I'm going back to Restream because that was a lot more stable platform, so we will not have that issue. All right, so we have people, Mike, tuning in from all over the place. Uh, let's see here. I don't know what that flag is. I wish I knew what your flag was. We have Turkey, we have Russia, we have Trenton, Ohio, we have New Zealand, Australia, we have Russia, another Russia, um, and that's about it. Now, let me um, ask you this question. Actually, it's a question coming in from here. Uh, tell us what great uses and tips on using the nano pails and Super 3 Citrus APC. Well, you can use it. Uh, the thing about citrus is it's pretty benign. It's very safe. Okay, it's made from um, the oils squished from the peels of uh, citrus fruits like lemons, grapefruit, oranges. Um, it makes a great degreaser. It's all natural. Um, this is also a water-based product. All um, all uh, 3D products are Prop 65 and VOC compliant, so they're very safe for us and very safe for the environment. Uh, but you'd use it like any APC because it's a citrus cleaner. It's going to probably be better at cl uh, cleaning really oily or grungy type surfaces, but just mix as directed and then use as you normally would any APC. It's a citrus based APC. Um, it's, I actually like it myself over just a normal APC because I like this, uh, the cleaning ability of citrus oils. Okay, now would you compare that to like the orange degreaser that we have? Yes, it'd be very similar to the orange degreaser we have. Is it stronger? Yep. Or, uh, the, or well, it depends the, on how you mix it. it just you can, yeah, it depends on See, the, the thing about the orange degreaser, that comes ready to use, but it's the same concept. So this is the same type of product, but just in a concentrate that remixes easily with water. So. Again, kind of back to, for people that do high volume detailing, you can, you always get more bang for your buck when you buy in bulk, okay? So now you're able to buy in bulk without all the water. So it's even better, better savings. All right, I got it, I got okay. you there, I got you there. Um, how much are the pump for the gallons and the beaded up is our, is it safe going over any wax? That's coming from Super Chevy. So uh, which product over the, wax? All right, uh, beaded up over wax, yes. Yeah, no, it's, it's, not a, it's not a harsh chemical at all. You know, questions like that, you know, here's where my brain goes. What well, wax? I mean, some waxes are really good. I mean, a lot, a lot of chemists make their waxes to be detergent resistant so they don't wash off, but some waxes aren't. So you can't have like a blanket answer because if you got a cheap wax on there, you know, maybe just wiping with a wet towel would take it off, just the physical contact. But Beat It Up is not meant to strip wax off. It's actually a... Um, it's, what, it, what it technically is, is a surface sealer. It's not a paint protectant. You can use it on paint, but you can use it on any hard, smooth surface. So it's a surface sealer. It seals the surface with a hydrophobic coating. Yeah, one of our, um, we're on that camera too, by the way. Okay. Um, one of our viewers out there that's our, actually one of the people that's our, I should, let's back this all up. One of the people that I've known for a while, uh, they, if I remember his name, Mark Weatherspoon Weatherspoon, if you're watching, hello, hi. Uh, he's been doing some torture tests over on his YouTube channel, which I would love to be able to do torture tests, but it's, I just can't, I can't do that on a company thing. But anyways, he did one the other day where it was against uh, PNS and some other Tech 35, T35 or whatever ceramic coating. 
and he to show you how durable that uh, beat it up is yeah. watch that video that's actually a very good video because i mean he runs down mcguire's uh, uh, wheel cleaner <laughs> on it wow he, i mean tar yeah. x and everything like that i mean well, it, it's it's a pretty cool video to show you the strength of it yeah so if it doesn't wipe off on that as long as your wax or your coating is sticking to your paint it's not going to do anything to yeah. that it's going to fortify whatever wax you have on exactly there. it's going to make the surface like really slick it's a, it's a nice product Hey, Tug R, just used Beat It Up for the first time this past week. Fantastic product and smells great. Now, would you say that this smells like a mango? I'm kind of thinking it's a mango-ish okay. kind of smell. You know, I'm the worst at detecting scents. I'm, I'm horrible at it. I, I, I've asked you, what the hell is this, you know? Yeah, he Something's does do that, broken people. inside my nose, I guess. I just don't know. All right. So. Uh, we got Justin. Justin? Yeah. Justin Gaddy watching from North Carolina. Keep up the good work. Thank you. We will do that. Uh, and then we have Tugar, less dusting than B-Mater, which is a great product itself. Yes. Okay, we got Konstantinos coming in from Greece. Uh, and so, I mean, this is, we got people all over the world. Like I said, if you guys are here and you're watching us, please put where you're from, because I um, started my, my wall to where to put people. Oh, gotcha, yep. Uh, yeah, definitely fruity, kind of pineapple-ish. We could go along that line. I think it's mango-ish. I don't know. All right, so what time is it? We have like 10 minutes left. Gotcha. Do you uh, just want to? Nanopels. Nanopels. Where it's at. You know, <laughs> if, you, if you look at these, these are usually typically considered high volume use products, like glass cleaner. You're going to clean a lot of glass with, uh, when you're detailing cars. Uh, the wheel cleaner. I mean, the first thing you do when you wash your car is you wash the wheels and tires. You know, so here's a way to get a great wheel cleaner, safer on any wheel, and buy it in bulk, mix it yourself. Yeah, now I already know what's going to happen. We're going to get questions now on this. It's like, how come you guys don't have nano pails of beat it up or instant detailer? You know, uh, there's some other things that have well, to go into Well, you can it. buy beat it up by the gallon, but again, it's RTU. It's ready yeah. to use. Yeah. So. yeah, so. And that's actually the better way to buy it. I mean, um, I did the math once. Buy the 16 ounce for the bottle, then yeah, get the gallon yeah. to refill. The gallon is uh, 35 bucks, the bottle's 15 bucks, and you can refill that bottle eight times. So it's a much better cost per ounce deal to buy in bulk. Oh, there's our lovely lights. Hold on, you're going dark. Now you're back. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for my electrician to come in to fix that, people. It, they're on a 30 minute timer, and if you don't move enough, they go off. Gotcha. The pre-soak is, is also a unique pro, uh, product in the industry. What this is for, uh, across the pond, like over in the UK and Europe, they call these uh, TFRs, traffic film removers. Okay, Let's, okay. We're, going, we're learning today. So, so it's a TFR, traffic film remover. But you know, one of the topics we've been covering for years is, we, over here I call it road, road film. film. You can call it traffic film, road film. It primarily comes off the road. That's why I call it road film. Uh, an easy way to see that is anytime you see a parking lot, and look at the parking spaces, you can see where all the cars drip oil in the middle of the parking space. When you're driving on a straight road on a dry day, the middle of the road is darker than the rest of the asphalt or the pavement. And that's because as cars are driving, they drip stuff down the center where the motor, the transmission, rear end, things like that are. Okay, so on a rainy day, uh, all the rain mixes with the oily films from all the droppings, you know, you got, uh, let's see how many we count. Uh, transmission fluid, engine oil, power steering fluid, Brake uh, antifreeze. Fluid. <laughs> Hopefully not brake, brake fluid. Brake fluid. Hopefully not, no one's out there dripping brake fluid. That's a really bad thing to be losing. Uh, and rear end gear oil. You know, oh, yeah. so those are the primary fluids that as cars get older, the, the seals transfer start to wear case, out. And they drip. Out of the transfer Hopefully not case. axle grease, but maybe. No, transfer, transfer case. The yeah, transfer case. case. Yeah, yeah, transfer case. Uh, gear oil. Yep. Okay, so that mixes with the water, then the car in front of you throws that onto your car. Okay, so if you just had this thing, you know, paint corrected and ceramic coated and you drove in the rain one time, you're not going to have road film. It happens over time. So if you're driving this car every single day from Stewart to West Palm Beach and it rains a lot around here, you're going to get road film and it impacts onto the outside of your car, not just the paint, on the glass, on the wheels, everything. And so what this is for is it's a way to try to dissolve and chemically remove some of that before you actually wash the car. So you spray this on, you let it dwell, then you power wash it or pressure wash it off, then you wash the sort car. Sort of like a pre-rinse, I guess. It's a pre-soak It's a pre-soak pre 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 to clean the car, remove things like road film. Yeah, we had a, a, a question come, I mean, not a question, but a statement come in from Cameron over on Facebook. Two pumps of super soap into a foam cannon and it comes out thick as 
exclamation mark. Yes, that's, uh, I don't have the Super Soap up here though, but that is another 3D product, Super Soap. Yeah, no, that would be amazing. I, I could just well, imagine. Do you remember when we did the video with, uh, we were shooting video for a foam, foam gun and we did it in front of my house and then it looked like oh, we yeah. were having a rave going down because we kept on shooting, shooting and there's yeah. just bubbles everywhere. Yeah. Uh, okay. Those we're going to use Super Soap tomorrow in the pressure washer when we wash the cars, by the way. Okay. Um, here's another one. Matthew, how much product would you want to add to like a two gallon sprayer, for example, pre-soak? So okay. two gallons. Well, yeah, there's 32 ounces. Two times 30 is 6,400. There's four 32 ounce bottles in a gallon. So there would be eight 32 ounce bottles in two gallons. So then that would be... Um, Eight pumps. Eight pumps. Eight pumps for two gallons. Is that my math right, Dan? Sounds good. Oh yeah, we ha we have a student in here. He, if you if you're wondering where Dan is, it's not my weird yeah. name. In yeah, that would be it. it uh, yeah, four. Yeah, eight. It'd be eight pumps. You did math. So proud. I hate doing math in my head. <laughs> so That's proud. why I have a phone, smartphone, uh, <laughs> the calculator. The calculator. Okay. Um, next week. All right. How are we going to do next week? Uh, next week's going to be clean up after the three-day class, and I think we'll have a 40 Ford Coupe here or a 65 Corvette here. So we'll be able to do something with those. Well, that, I'm thinking because you're, you're going to be off Monday, Tuesday. I'll be here Monday. Oh, you'll be here? Oh, you're, you're going to be off Tuesday, Wednesday. Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm going to be off Thursday, Friday. Thursday. So... No live class next week? No live class next week. Yeah. We got to recoup from the, from the yeah. little class that we're doing over okay, the weekend. Okay, so no, no, it's no live class next week. Yeah, uh, but if you guys want, message us. Our socials are down in the description, everything like that. Whatever idea you want, post it here on one of these. If you're watching on Facebook or in the group or over on YouTube, post a topic over there. But let's spitball something here. What haven't we did in a while? Maybe uh, we could talk about the three different compounds in our line. We got the 500, the 501, and the 510. Or, I like that. I get questions, what's the difference between them all the time? Okay, um, well, that is something that Tunch wants to do. He wants to do a what's the difference series. So maybe mm -hmm. we can bring that over into here. And we can also do another one on the difference between 502 and 520. So there are two different finishing polishes and also 505 and speed well, and... Well, what we can do... Paste wax versus liquid. Maybe every other week we start doing the, what's the difference. So we'll highlight products, yep. you know, uh, that are all the same, like all the compounds. Then we'll say what the differences are. Then the following week, we'll actually give demonstration about how to do something. You about yawned, I saw that. <laughs> um, but uh, it's because I really would like to do the glass polishing one. Oh yeah. Because that, and there's a lot of people that, you know, they try it and they're using you know, an over-the-counter compound or with a foam pad oh, yeah. thinking that they're gonna get rid of their wiper scratches and that ain't gonna happen. No, nah, glass polishing is an art uh, unto itself. It's called a, a chemical mechanical process. So um, there, there's a lot of magic that goes on. What's interesting is science, scientists in science, they don't actually know how cerium oxide works. Like, they don't know how it works. <laughs> it just works. It works and it works in conjunction with water. Now, it's really hard to wrap your brain around how water could help a polish cut or break glass, but it happens at the molecular level. So, and if you ever feel cerium oxide polish, it feels like Jurgen's hand lotion. See, a lot of people think when you talk about a polish, you're talking about something gritty, you know, some sort of abrasive particle in there that has a, a sharpness to it. But, but that's just not the case. Uh, none of our compounds feel gritty. None of our polishes, none of our AOIs feel gritty. But cerium oxide is the same thing. It doesn't feel gritty. It feels like a Jurgen's hand lotion, very smooth. So it's a chemical action taking place with the addition of water and of course a rotating rayon pad. By the way, the, um, <clears throat> the 67 Fairlane that's out there that we're doing uh, multiple step paint correction on, um, it has wiper marks in it. So we could use that for a demonstration. Do you think that they, are we going to have that? Well, that I can be, get the, I can be get like it. two weeks away. I, we can get it back. To tell you the truth, I can get cars down here with window scratches any day of the week. We live on the coast, and what happens is sand flies around, lands on your wiper arms. You turn them on in the morning, you get a couple of little scratches. You do that for a couple of years, pretty soon you got some pretty good scratches in your window. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. very true. Okay, uh, so 
And we're launching that glass polish soon, so we should be doing a video on that, get people excited. Okay, so then two weeks, let's do glass polish. Yeah. I, I, I got a number of detailers that ever since they saw my demonstration at Mobile Tech Expo where I machine sanded a, the windshield on a rental car, I started with 320 grit, okay, machine sanding, and I pulled all my sanding marks out. So since then, I have a lot of detailers contact me because a lot of their clients have cars with uh, wiper marks or, or scratches and swirls on the glass. And I know a lot of people say, well, just break the window and have it replaced. But that's not always an option, especially for classics. Yeah, like that one right behind you? <laughs> yeah, for, for classic cars, like the, like the MG that, that we're going to polish out here in the class. That MG's, old British cars, are notorious for rust, for cancerous rust everywhere. I guarantee you, if you pull the windshield out, you're going to find a lot of rust. So now you can't just put the new windshield in. You've just turned a windshield replacement project into a body off frame restoration because no, no car guy in his right mind would just put a new windshield over rusty steel. So a lot, that's, and a lot of guys don't want to do that. They don't want to take their car apart and fix all the rust. They just want to drive it. So instead of taking the glass out, you just polish it. So there's a lot of times when glass replacement isn't always a good option. Polishing the glass is a better option for people. I've been waiting since SEMA. Julie, what are you waiting since SEMA for? The glass polish or the is marine it, compound? Is it, yeah, is it the glass polish or the marine compound that you're waiting for, Julie? If you can, answer me back really quickly. Um, I, I think that we do the glass polish. Uh, I There's think something that- something you wanna share? No? Okay. What, what you got back there? Oh, wait. But oh. One of our, uh, our, our reps, Chris, is here. Do you, do you want to share? Do you, you can walk up yeah. there. Hey, we got a surprise guest. Yeah, I got a surprise 3D guest. 3D Live. 3D, 3D, 3D Live. Live. We got a surprise. Chris, it's great to see you, man. Good to see you, Mike. Yeah, what you got there? It's our new Flex Light. All right, here. Let me. I like it already. It's, uh, am I not in frame here? No, you you will be better in frame as soon as I get my camera. So, what we got magic Ooh. going on here? Wow! Look at this telescoping. I need a wide angle lens Adjustable uh, butterflies on it. Oh, hold on. Butterfly flaps or panels, butterfly panels, light panels. Adjustable. Wow. An intense light. Yeah. I hold like on, it. hold on. What, what does this say right here? 4,000 lumens. Leave with Yancey. There we go. All right, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so this is our new 24 volt technology. The, the Stand uh, next to him, Mike, so that yeah, we can pick up Yeah, this is our new 24 up. volt lithium uh, setup. You know, so it's a... It's a new battery system, but it's just, it's great. I mean, and honestly, this is the next generation of, of flex cordless, so. I like it. Yeah. I'm glad we got it here for the class this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Even something like this, Mike. You can take this off. Oh, wow. Portable. Oh, man. So now you've got a, another type of light that you're literally able to set down on the ground. Yeah. You know, that is sweet. Off. Let me see that thing. This thing has horrible scratches, but this yellow color oh, doesn't on, really on, show them that well. I'll come right there. Hold on. Hold on. Let's see what happens. No, oh, wow, this, that really it's kind it. of a bad demo here, Yancey. But, I mean, it's just, see, the yellow color just doesn't show well, them on camera very well. All right, let's go to the orange. Shows, come on. There's nothing on the orange paint, though. How do you know? You haven't lit it up. I have lit it up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm blowing so, out here. Yeah, it's just, it's better for the human eye, not video work. Yeah. Yeah, here you go. I'll oh, give you back your cool. contraption. That is cool. Just something new I wanted to bring to your class, Mike. Well, I'm glad. Thank you. Yeah, sure. We will exploit it. <laughs> Flex makes the best stuff. We have a lot of new stuff coming out on this battery. Uh, Here's my favorite Flex tool. <laughs> it's my Flex coffee cup. With a rubber bottom on it? With a rubber bottom, so it don't slide off a car. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. No, uh, Bob Eichelberg brought that to me. Uh, I was the first guy in America to get the new Flex coffee cup. So I, uh, I keep this around with all my collection of uh, one only and prototype Flex tools. Okay. Yancey, I think that's all we got. We all got right. some great products that are called NanoPills. They save you a lot of time, a lot of money, easy mixing, brainless uh, dilution system. They weigh less. You're not going to spend less money in gas fuel as you drive around with these things. If you haven't checked out the NanoPills, you can get more information on 3dproducts.com. 
and um, give them a try. Put them, up, put them against anything that you're using right now. Okay, hold on. I do have a couple things. Can you use beat it up as a topper in a 3D ceramic? Yes, I do that all the time. Yes. It's amazing doing that because it gives it an extra gloss and a little bit more slickness. Slickness. Uh, slickness, you like that? Uh, then we have Lyle Patterson. Hi again from Australia. Can pre-soak be used in a foam cannon? It, it, it can be. You can put anything in a foam can and how much it's going to foam, I'm not really sure. Uh, we'll, we will try that out. You know, since we just built this brand new facility, um, it's, it's taken us a while to go through all the products to shoot videos, but we will get to all of them at some point. Yes. We, I'm always amazed that most of the things I put in a foam cannon or a foam gun or a Tornador gun, almost everything foams. It's kind of cool. So I would say yes. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, that is true. Okay, well, let's come back over to this camera. And uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, sorry for the technical issues at the beginning. And that will be addressed because I'm not going to stick with one stream. Yes, one stream. Going back to Restream, which is a better software. Uh, that's what you happens when you go for more bells and whistles. You get more headaches. Uh, keep it simple, Simon. <laughs> yeah, keep it simple. I got to, you know, you keep telling me that all the time. <laughs> we I were talking about listened. that earlier, so. But I want to say thank you all for tuning in. Uh, stay tuned to all of our social channels during the weekend because I'll be probably maybe doing a little pop-up lives throughout the class, awesome. giving some little tips and letting you guys kind of see behind the scenes of what it's actually like to be at a Mike Phillips detailing class. It is a lot of work and each student, I don't know if you guys really see that, as soon as they get here in the morning, they'll have their own very own carts with all the stuff ready to rock and roll. They For have the first two cars, then we'll swap to different products. Yeah. So this is what they will receive and uh, as soon as they come in. But I'm looking very forward to till tomorrow and I'm looking very forward to next Thursday because then I can finally take a break. But like always, please like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, all that stuff. You know the dog and pony show, just if you can help us. That would be amazing. Makes the algorithm say, hey, these guys are pretty cool. And when he's sharing these live video clips from our class, one of the things I want everybody to pay attention to is what you're going to see is people working on cars. Oh, that's what I went over there is yeah. because you, there's no chairs in there's, this place. We have no chairs here. There's no chairs. So if you want to sit down, pull up a floor. Yeah, well, that's where you eat your lunch. That's where you eat your lunch before. <laughs> but so. that's all. We still got to finish setting up. We have to break this down, then swap some cars around and get ready for first thing in the morning because the class starts at when? 7.30, and one of the things I always do now is I always take a, I take my watch off for the class, but to start it, I always like to take a picture showing that we're starting at 7.30. I make my students get here, at six. I'm here at six, so anytime after that, have coffee and donuts because at 7.30 we start. We don't start. We don't start talking then. We don't talk, we start working on cars, and in this case we'll be washing cars first. Okay, so. so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around and play ZZ Top because this like is a, it's a ZZ Top car. Kind of is. I think the ZZ well, Top car. Well, they had car. fenders. Yeah. It had fenders, the yeah. ZZ Top car. Yeah, did. that's right. And plus it had girls that looked a lot better than I do. <laughs> so with that, bye everybody. See you next week or whenever. And that.